Hello, this is the overview lecture for lab assignment number two. The related lectures for this lab assignment are approximately lectures four through six. Written material can be found in sections 1.4 and 1.5. Our overall goals for this lab assignment are first to do some testing and analysis of resistive networks. Now a lot of this stuff is very similar to what we did in lab one, except that in lab one we were working with a single resistor. In this lab assignment we will be having multiple resistors in our circuits. I'll talk about more details of that in just a moment. In the second part of this lab assignment we will be designing and building a temperature measurement system using our resistive network techniques. Finally, based on what you learned from this temperature measurement system design, I will ask you to create at least a conceptual design of a temperature measurement system using alternate design requirements. In this last section of this lab assignment, you do not need to build this circuit that you design unless you want to. It just needs to be conceptualized. Now, talking again about resistive networks. We're going to do two things with resistive networks. We want to find the power dissipation of a single resistor in a resistive network. Now that will require some slightly different measurement techniques than we used in lab assignment one. I will demonstrate those next. Also for resistive networks, we're going to determine a circuit input resistance. In order to do that, we will wire up the resistive network and we will measure a voltage current characteristic for the network. Okay, from that voltage current characteristic, we can estimate the resistance as the slope of a straight line which fits the data. This process is identical to what we did in lab assignment one when we measured voltage current characteristics. We're just doing multiple resistors now. I will not re-demonstrate this part of the assignment. Likewise, for the temperature measurement system design, my demonstration was in lecture number six. I will not demo that again here. In part one of lab two, we have a resistive network which contains a 4.7 kilo ohm resistor. We want to find the power dissipated by that particular resistor. Now there are a number of ways to go about doing this. Power is voltage times current by definition. For resistors, we could measure just the voltage and use power is equal to V squared over R. Alternately, we could measure just current. Power is then equal to R times I squared. Now, in order to make this measurement, you have to be careful that you're actually measuring the parameters that are appropriate for the resistor that you want to examine. Okay, I'll do a demo now of a different resistive network in which I'm measuring voltage and current for a single resistor in that network. Now first I'm going to sketch the circuit that I'm going to implement in order to show you the measurement techniques that you'll want for part one of this lab assignment. Then we'll look at the circuit in operation. Now our circuit is going to consist of a couple of parallel 10 ohm resistors in series with a third 10 ohm resistor. So my overall circuit is going to look something like this. I can apply a voltage, Vn, to this circuit, and what I want is find the power dissipated by this particular resistor. So I don't want this voltage or the total current going into the circuit. What I want is this voltage and or this current only in this 10 ohm resistor. So now we have to start being careful about what we're actually measuring and that will not correspond to what's being supplied by our power supply to the overall circuit. Now let's take a look at the circuit in action. Okay, here is our circuit implemented on the EE board. These are my two parallel 10 ohm resistors. Now what I'm going to do first is use my DMM to measure current through this resistor. I'm applying power to this node here, so I'm applying power to this resistor in parallel with the combination of the DMM plus this resistor. Keep in mind that a DMM used as an ammeter acts as a short circuit. There should be no voltage drop across here, so what I'm doing is measuring just the current that's going through this resistor. Now 
those are in series with this other 10 ohm resistor, this is tied to ground. Going over to the waveform software, I'm only using VP plus to provide a variable voltage to the resistive network. Let me turn on power so that I'm applying two volts overall to these resistors. I'm getting something over 130 milliamps applied to the overall circuit. Notice that my ammeter is telling me that I'm getting along the lines of 50 milliamps. So not all of the current is going through this resistor. I can measure the current through a specific resistor by placing the ammeter in series with that specific resistor. Now, if I want to measure the voltage across a particular resistor, if I'm going to use my DMM, I need to do some slight rewiring. To measure voltage, the DMM is used in parallel with the components being measured. So now I'll rewire this so that this resistor now shares the same nodes. These two are very obviously in parallel now, and then that combination is in series with this. I can measure the voltage difference across this resistor. I need to switch my functionality to voltage and change my leads to a voltage measurement. So out of a total 2 volt voltage drop, I'm getting about 2 thirds of a volt across these particular resistors. Okay. Notice that my voltage difference is not relative to ground, it's across a particular resistor. If you want to use the EE board to measure this voltage difference, what you must do is measure two different voltages. Remember the V meter voltages are all relative to ground. So I can measure a voltage at this terminal, say on V meter 1, and then I can measure a voltage at this terminal on V meter 2. Going back to the waveform software, V meter 1 is giving me approximately 2 volts, which is good because I'm applying 2 volts at the upper terminal of the resistors. V meter 2 is about 1.32 volts. So the voltage difference across the resistor is V meter 1 minus V meter 2, or about our two-thirds of a volt that we saw before using the DMM. In part two of this lab assignment, we are going to wire up a resistive network as shown in this schematic. Now we want to determine the input resistance of this overall circuit. We are going to do that by measuring voltage and current at the input terminals of this network. By applying a number of different voltages and measuring the corresponding current, we can plot the voltage current characteristic. We know that the resistance of this overall network is going to be the slope of that voltage current characteristic. This leads us into a topic that we'll be talking about later in lectures, Thevenin's theorem, in which we can see that any linear circuit has an equivalent Thevenin resistance which describes the slope of the voltage current characteristic. In the third part of this lab assignment, we will design a thermistor-based temperature measurement system. I've talked extensively about that system in lecture six and actually done a demonstration of the system. That lecture should provide you with the information that you need in order to do this part of this lab assignment. Finally, in this lab assignment, we're going to give you an alternate set of design requirements for a temperature measurement system. All we really want from you on this is a conceptual design that you think will meet these requirements. If you want to wire up the circuit that you design and test it, that's great. If you don't, then that's fine too. All we want is a design that you think will meet these requirements, you may want to use what you've previously incorporated in, la in part three of this lab assignment, or you may feel like giving me a completely different design.